Most bands release a record when they have something to say. So after 13 years, Tool have come back with a lot to say. What's up, guys? Welcome back to Lowen University. We are back with more Tool. I know it's very soon, but after posting this last poll, 46 and 2 1, I posted that almost a couple days later and I was flooded with comments. I got Instagram messages. I even got a couple Facebook messages saying, I'm disappointed that something from Fear Inoculum did not win. I really want to see Numa. Sad that it lost. And I'm here to give you guys, the people, and this little community we have going on what they want. So we're going to be doing just that today. Numa was released in 2019. It's part of Fear Inoculum. After a 13 year wait, the band came back and made a bold statement with a very long record. Let's jump in and check it out. Numa by Tool. A little bit of rub in those notes. Some seconds there. Pretty cool. Love how that lines up there. I'm really liking the way he's voicing those chords. There's kind of one note that kind of stays between them all. Taking it up higher. Already some polyrhythmic stuff from Danny. Da -dun, da -dun, da -dun. With kind of the upbeats in there. Dun, dun. Real quick on those guitar chords, it sounds like there's one or two notes that stay constant between each chord, and it's really cool the way they're voiced because that allows the chord progression to kind of sound more homogenous. You know, when you have a similar note that goes through a four chord progression, let's say, it can kind of tie it together to your ear more, and you kind of hear that leading tone. It sounds like it's a D or an E. Um, sounds like A, F, G. Sounds like a D and E are kind of going between those notes. I have to hear it again, but what it does is it kind of puts a little melody in there almost. And I wouldn't even call just two notes that stay the same a melody, but I just like the way it kind of ties that up and I go back and jump into this next part. A little harmonic there. So dynamic. Little melody there. Sounds like he's doing some double stops on the bass. Again, I, knowing enough about Tool and some of the reactions I've done, Whenever they put these riffs out there by themselves, there's a statement being made. It's like, pay attention to this riff. We're going to use it a lot. We're going to bring it back in ways you didn't expect. And it's going to be kind of the crux of the song. So listen to it now by itself and get familiar with it. That's kind of what these things do. And I'm realizing Tool actually have sort of a formula. As complex and nuanced as our music is, it's not a songwriting formula. It's like an emotional formula. In the sense that, like, we're going to familiarize you with these couple of different elements. Like, we're going to show you the ingredients. And then we're going to show you how we put them all together in the final recipe. I can kind of hear that setup coming into play now. But I'm loving that bass melody on top. Very D-based, of course, D minor. Sounds like he opens that D string up. I want to go back and hear that by itself. And as far as the time signature, it's, it's like some seven going on. I'm not really too focused on that because it could be anything with this band. I'll let it 
play a bit. Just a somber feeling, dark, minor, really airy drum beat from Danny. Nothing lines up here very much. We have some counterpoint going on here. We have this sort of, sounds like D octaves with just a seven thrown in. From Adam. And it sounds like Justin is taking that bass theme that started out and it's becoming again, I say this word in every tool video, it's like an ostinato, which is just a repeating musical phrase that starts in the forefront and then goes to the background and something else comes atop of it. And it kind of sounds like those are all double stops in the bass. And he's kind of throwing that bottom note in there. It almost is like, hey, this is where the phrase starts over. I'm not sure about the time signature. While I do have perfect pitch, I don't have perfect time signature, whatever that would mean. It's kind of hard. I kind of have to hear it in context. And the thing about time signatures is that it can really be anything. You know, if I just played a straight, this could be in 6-8, this could be in 7-4, this could be in 13-8. It all depends on where I contextualize it with something else. So time signatures take a little while to get in. It sounds like that guitar riff is in 7. And before I keep going, it's adding rhythmic dissonance. You know, we think about dissonance with harmony a lot. You know, minor seconds would kind of sound like... That's harmonic dissonance. But rhythmic dissonance, I find, is kind of when there's polyrhythms, there's things that don't line up, and it's all for a greater purpose of lining up a few bars later. It's kind of discombobulated sounding. Just kind of listen to the interplay between Adam on guitar and Justin's bass part. It, it's, it only lines up every few bars on a very odd count. Adam's on a whole different downbeat starting point here. Nothing's lines up. There it went. And right as he said Numa, it purposely lined up there. Like I always wonder if these things with tool are thought out, if it just happens that way. It nothing just seems unintentional, but I love how all of that rhythmic dissonance was all going. And it sounds like Adam's kind of in like a seven. Don't 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 gonna don't 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 that'd be seven one two one two three one two one two one two three one two one two three four five six seven one two three four five that's kind of the pattern i'm hearing and he's kind of adding this tag on there that kind of thing nonetheless rhythmic dissonance discombobulation it's kind of gone left and right you can't find where the rhythm is and they bring it back to you on numa listen to the how that happens here brilliant right there See, now Adam goes back to the bass part. They want you to hear the vocals here right now. Nothing confusing. Like a chorus instrumental. Uh 
Oh, it's a drum feature. To me, it is. Big peak. They brought you in tenths for a second. Now we're back to the bass riff. Again, when I say formula, this it's not even their songwriting formula. It's just that they want to bring you up a little bit just to give you a taste of where it might go later. Then they're going to bring you back down, but not quite as low as the first time. And you're going to kind of go up. It's like going upstairs. You know, I think about Tool songs. It's like taking the stairs in a lot of ways. You know, some bands in this scene, in this genre, it's like getting on an elevator. You start on the first floor, you press a button, you can't see where you're going, and the door opens up and you're there. That's when you get hit with the key change or the, the stylistic change or the breakdown. Tools like taking the stairs. Like You can kind of look up and see where you're going, and it's going to take some work, and it's going to take a little longer. But when you get there, it's going to be all more rewarding somehow. That's kind of what this reminds me of. They take you up here, they bring you down, not quite as low, then they take you higher, like Creed, and then you get all the way to the top, and it's like this all makes sense. I, I'm just hearing that setup happening already. Uh, let's keep going. There's the riff, but it's way more in the fourth. It's way more in the front now. I don't know the time signature, and I'm I'm probably gonna stop trying to figure it out. There's I can definitely hear the prescribed two against three. I do hear a seven eight pattern going on with the, the guitar. Most seven eight is one two one two one two three or one two three four five six seven. So two two three. This feels like two three two. So one two three four five six seven one two three four five or one two one two three one two one two one two three. But inside of that, it's five eight. There was a little tag because it just cuts short at the end. I'm going to stop the time signatures because I'm not going to try to outsmart this band and figure it out. It could really be anything. But I'm loving the build so far. And I'm honestly kind of loving the mix. You know, when Fear Inoculum came out, my experience with this record is that I put it on the day it came out. I was driving. I wasn't listening to it with my undivided attention, which is what you should do with this band. And I said, I need to come back and soak this in. So I really want to see how their sound has changed in 13 years. There's some familiar elements. And then there's some kind of new, more mature. I, you know, not that Tool wasn't mature, but I just hear some of their main core elements like really refined in this song so far. Let's keep going. Bass sounds kind of flangery now. Delay maybe? It's very in the background now. This is so smooth. They brought back that guitar riff, made it louder this time. The bass, they broke for a minute to bring you back, back when the bass was isolated. Now the bass is like way in the background. It's like just a thought put back here. Now they're bringing back that same drum intro. Again, they've given us like four or five ingredients, and they're just slowly cooking this dish up. Uh, it's very, very... I, I just love how it's so subtle, so simple, but just the way it's done, the presentation is next level. I mean, every song I've analyzed kind of has this going on. It's that little tag there. I can't figure out what the time is. Meaty riff. Love that tone, man. Ugh.
that bass tone just right nestled under the guitar tone. It just like it's mixed so perfectly. It's just like completely homogenous. I love the sound. I'm kind of noticing this album's mixed a little less hot than 10,000 Days. Like the drums kind of have that more like a little bit more natural of a sound, kind of like lateralis. The drums just had this kind of, I don't want to say dryness to them, but it just feels a little more roomy. And I think that's allowing some of those nuances to just be a little more audible. Um, that's kind of my take on the production so far. Still sounds massive, but the drums are a little less up front than I remember things like 10,000 Days. Um, <laughs> Yeah, just a little more natural. Okay, there. This is the fork in the road. We're going somewhere. D minor arpeggio. that middle point bringing in a different bass riff they're abandoning anything you've heard before this is always intentional in their songs they want to like take you away from everything for a minute it's like you, they just want to make you miss everything you've just heard the bass riff the rhythmic dissonance it was all a statement early on now they're going to distract you a little bit kind of where they're going here and that bass riff is just becoming another ostinato sounds like a F F D. I'm just gonna keep repeating it. I wanna go back and let that start a little, just a few seconds ago. Here we go. This is that same drum part we heard in the beginning. That kick drum recontextualizes the actual rhythm of the bass. That was the only variation note. Let's we'll see what he played here. Little variation there. Back to the same. So something here, and I've always wondered this about bands like Tool or anything else that has these just long middle sections that are kind of free form. Yeah, there's a rhythm, there's a drum part going on, but it's not like keeping time. What I'm saying is that if you were to play this live, like I guess they are or have, you know, it's like who's counting where we're at? You know, I don't believe, and in my experience, touring and playing progressive music, really hard, difficult stuff to remember. There was just some sections where you can't just count. You can't stop playing in the middle of the show and be like, okay, 28, 29, and like you're counting to 32. You kind of just stop counting, and you're waiting for these other cues that might be a variation in another part. And I'm wondering if they kind of purposely write this stuff in a vacuum in the studio knowing that when they perform it live, there will need to be a way to know where we are. So this bass part going on the entire time, he's doing that over and over again. I mean, at least 15 plus times so far. And then there's those little variations where I heard, it's like he just went up. Was it the 16th time? I don't know. But in a live setting, if, if I was, in a band playing something like this, and I heard that, I wouldn't. I would stop counting for the whole this whole metal part, and I would just wait to hear that variation. Then I would know. Okay, I'm on the 16th repeat. This goes until 24. So these things are sometimes put in in the studio, 
on the recording to know when you play it live, it's going to help you kind of know where you are. That's kind of my take on why that one variation would be there. It's like a little just built in signal to kind of bring everything back together. And you'll kind of notice a different part starts right after he does that. So listen for this variation. See this next part, this next layer comes in. In a live show, it'd be like, okay, when you hear that variation, start the next layer. I could be totally wrong, but as a musician, that's how I kind of hear stuff like this. Down lower. Just putting that bass down an octave just gave it a more brooding feeling now. This is such a slow burn. Guitar melody. Whatever this is, we've been waiting nine minutes for it. Bringing it all back in. Here we go. Speeding up that bass riff. Thrashing it up. Oh. Yes. I got goosebumps. That's the freaking guitar riff that came in so long ago. It, hit, it took a couple notes for me to recognize. I thought it was going to be the bang gong, bang gong, gay dong. I thought it was going to come back in with like a sped up version of that, but it's that guitar riff, just like I told you. I knew it was going to come back somewhere. That um, we're talking about the that little thing. Thinking, yeah, I don't want to go back and waste too much time on that. I remember that coming in very subtly. Then it came in louder. Now it's the main focus. Like, this is kind of the climax. Unbelievable. It's the subtle things. You know, this reminds me of like having a, a four course meal at a nice restaurant. You know, your first course comes out, probably something uh, produce, salad. There's a really good vinaigrette on it, a really good dressing. You finish the salad. Like, man, that was really good. The taste lingers a bit. And then you go on to the next courses of the meal. And you're still kind of thinking about how good that vinaigrette was, but you're, you're kind of over it. You're moving on to the next thing. And then it's like the last course comes out, maybe some protein, meat, who knows? And the dressing is somehow reused in that, whether it's a glaze on something. And it's like, oh my God, I've missed this. Now it's even better because I know it was good. That, that's a wacky analogy I just came up with, but that's kind of what it made me think of. I kind of forgot about that riff in the middle. You know, when they took you away from it for a minute, now when it comes back, it's like in a completely different impact. This seems to be the theme with this band as early as, you know, the 1996 album Anima. That's kind of what happened in that song too. This feels a little more refined and I'm not as familiar with Undertow, Opiate. I know that sound was a little more, you know, the songs I've heard, Sober, uh, The Flood, or not, um, what's it called? I can't remember. That was a little more just energetic. This is like the slow burn kind of version of Tool. It's really incredible. I want to hear that come in again because that just got me. That got me all.
I had no idea that was coming. I thought it was going to go right into... Bad on, bad on. But they bring this freaking thing back. God, that's that tone. Whatever the notes are, man, I love that. Just so perfectly woven. I love how that riff scales so much. I love how that was such a dynamic piece put in the beginning of the song and they've just made it so big. Hadn't changed any notes. It's just the gradient on of intensity on just those riffs. It's just really interesting how they're able to scale them up to be intense and transform them without taking away from anything from the riffs. They bring it back, it's familiar, you've heard it, and it's just it's just scaled up. It's just put on steroids. This song kind of is like, now that I'm kind of getting toward the end, it's kind of like a bigger, meatier version of Schism on steroids. Kind of the structure, you know, really focusing on that bass theme, the bass riff is kind of the meat and potatoes, setting the foundation. It deviates in the middle, and then it all comes back at the end and contextualizes everything you heard before. That's what I'm feeling. Interesting. Back to this kind of drum fill. Some bendy leads there. These little elements coming back just I guess that's how they wrap the song up yeah oh, they're gonna leave it unresolved this is kind of like the way the pot ended in a way oh no it, it, it does that swell back to D whoa whoa most bands release a record when they have something to say that's sort of the foundation of the artistic expression with music. This album is a statement. We're going to release another one because we have more music. We have more to express. So after 13 years, Tool have come back with a lot to say. And I need to go down Fear Inoculum and check out the rest. I know there's some other long, epic tracks on there. You know, looking, all the tracks are very long, over 10 minutes, four or five of them. Because I feel each one is going to be this different flavor of their same sound with a different sonic journey. And yeah, I mean, these guys are getting older. You know, they've been around a long time, but this just is like tool at peak performance. It's all the things I've heard in their earlier sound kind of just refined. And it, there's just no wasted notes, no wasted, nothing dragged on in this song. That middle section, when, now that I hear the way it kind of culminated, I think they just want to make you wait. 
Because the longer you don't have something, the better is better it is when you get it. That's kind of what those middle sections tend to do. Then they brought back all the elements you were just about to forget about in the first part of the song. Thank you guys for the messages on multiple social media platforms saying I should get to Numa, and I just wanted to turn turn this around really quick and get it to you. This was really great. I think Tool are just firing on all cylinders still. All the elements I like just wrapped up in a new, very refined way. Thank you guys. Please like the video. Give it a thumbs up. Comment what else you would like to see. Comment what you think. You know, or Tool, were you, were you disappointed with this album? Or was it like their best record yet? Does it top 10,000 days, the one before it? I've got to listen to the rest to make that decision, but this is a great indicator of their self-awareness, their style, their brand, their sound, and just kind of gives every Tool fan exactly what they're known for. That's my takeaway from this song. But thank you guys. Please make sure you're subscribed. Love you all. Cheers. We'll see you next time.